Hello everyone, this is Daniel from fitnessblender.com and today we're going to be doing a core intensive strength training routine. Now if you've seen any of our other core training routines before, you're going to see uh, a lot of similar exercises. However, today we're going to be focusing on how to do those exercises specifically with added weight, specifically with a dumbbell. So if you want to follow along with the routine exactly how we have it laid out, this is going to be very, very focused on overall strength and mass building. So we're trying to really kill those muscles to build up uh, the overall strength and size of those muscles. However, if you don't want to necessarily build uh, size in the, that, those core muscles, then all you have to do is cut the weight out and do this with just body weight. It turns it more into uh, intensive toning or light strength training routine. So it's up to you as how you want to do it. We have your warm-up and your cool-down included. If you want to go for strength, you'll want to have some extra weights. Otherwise, you can do it with just body weight. With that said, let's go ahead and get started with our warm-up. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get ready for our warm-up. We're we'll doing each one of these for 30 seconds apiece, starting off with a side step and an overhead reach. So nice deep breath in. You're just going to be stepping back behind you with one foot. You reach across, away from that foot you stepped behind with. And same thing off to the other side. Just altering back and forth. Focus more on that range of motion, trying to really get a good stretch to that oblique with each movement then speed. But as you feel more comfortable, you can always speed up a little bit more. All right, we're gonna do trunk circles next. So keep those hips facing straight up and down, only bending your torso, round forward, to the side, back, opposite side, pause where you started, and then roll it back around. So trying again to get as much range of motion out of this as you can. You can turn into a more of a fluid movement if you want to. Just take your time, get a good stretch all the way around. All right, we're doing toe touch sweeps next, so widen those feet out just a little bit more, about twice shoulder width. Down one leg, across the other, and up. So focus on that little bit of a backward stretch at the top, and rounding those shoulders and back in the center. So again, we're really focusing on trying to warm up that range of motion through that torso. Whatever you're working on that day is what you want to focus your warm up on. All right, let it relax. We're doing a lunge with a rotation next. We're gonna step forward with your left foot forward. Kind of stagger those feet relatively wide. Hands straight up in front of you. You're gonna to turn towards that rear leg and then towards the front leg. Just alternating back and forth. Nice slow movement. Focusing on getting as much rotation through that torso as you can. So keeping those hips stationary and just twisting those shoulders back and forth. All right, same thing on the other side. So that right leg goes forward, left leg back. Again, keep those feet staggered wide this way so they're not directly in line. Towards your rear leg, towards your front leg. Just alternating back and forth. This isn't about how deep you're lunging, this is about how much you're rotating. So if you wanna do a, a shallower lunge, that's perfectly fine. Just wherever you feel comfortable, as long as you're working that core. All right, let it relax. We're doing a, a mock standing side crunch, so one hand over top of your head, and you're going to crunch down. So towards the side you have your arm up on, Crunch down towards that side and back up. Stretch it the opposite direction and crunch down, kind of working against yourself here. We're trying to warm up those, those obliques a little bit. Trying to get as much lateral movement as possible, as well as kind of working against yourself to warm those muscles up, get a little more blood flow in the area. So crunch it down and stretch it open. Crunch down. Stretch it open. Again, make sure you're working against yourself so that left and right oblique are challenging one another. All right, we're doing a bent over cat cow neck. So on your deadlift, a straight leg deadlift, you're gonna hinge only the hips. Keep that back flat. 
slight bend in those knees, you're going to round your shoulders forward and arch it up. So back and forth between that cat-cow position, but bent over. So rounding and arching. And let that relax. We're doing a torso twist plus a knee next. So on the every third, you're gonna lift your knee. So it's one, two, three. Bring that knee and elbow up. Make sure it's the opposite elbow or opposite knee from elbow. You're bringing it across your body. So you're trying to pull your hips the opposite direction your shoulders are going. All right, last one is an up and out jack. So up and out if you want to do a low impact version, by all means do that. Otherwise, nice and quick movement. Keep those shoulders nice and rigid. Trying to get a little bit of cardio in here. Try to get that heart rate up a little bit more. Try to get your respiration up a little bit more. Getting ready for this strength training routine. Just a few seconds left. And let it relax. Take a nice deep breath in. Grab your dumbbell if you're going to be doing the strength training routine along with me. Otherwise, just body weight is fine for more toning. Grab a mat if you have one handy, especially if you're going to be on a hard surface. Let's get started with that strength training routine here in just a second. All right, everyone. So all the rest of these exercises can be down on the ground. I've got a dumbbell here ready to go. We're going to be starting off with a traditional crunch. So I'm going to be actually using this whole weight here. I have up to 30 pounds is our maximum here. We're going to be doing just a traditional crunch. So just crunch it forward, slowly back down, but don't let those abdominal muscles completely release. So crunch up and back down. Try to get a nice full range of motion. Remember, you're not trying to push that weight up. You're trying to pull your shoulders in towards your hips. So crunch those shoulders down towards those hips, basically kind of rolling forward towards those thighs rather than trying to go up towards the ceiling, if that makes sense. Just take your time. That weight is directly above those shoulders. If you want to make it more difficult, you can just slowly bring it out further over top of your head, but it significantly gets harder uh, the, the further you go out. All right, we're doing a back bow next. I'm gonna drop my weight down here. Just 10 pounds. Flat on your stomach, hand, uh, dumbbell just above your head. This is a traditional back bow. You're just going to lift that chest up and then hover just above the ground. If you want to, you can even set this thing on the back of your head. But that's only if you have a nice strong neck. Otherwise, you don't want to overstrain your, your neck. Keep those lungs open. Remember, we're doing a lot of sets on these mu muscles, so don't overload yourself on these first few exercises. Back over for that crunch. Gotta bump it back up to 30 here. Crunch up. Keep those core muscles tight. No letting them relax in between repetitions. Focus on a nice smooth contraction up as well as slowly letting it back down. No letting it drop. That negative drop is just as important as the crunch going up. Relax. I'm going to drop that all the way off back to our back bows. So roll back over. Straight down. Make sure the only thing that's touching is that waist. Lift that chest up off the ground.
Keep those lungs open, no holding your breath. Especially when working on your core, your body's gonna wanna try to hold your breath. Try to fight against that, keeping those lungs open. It'll actually force that core to become a lot more controlled and stronger. Ooh, man, my arms are giving up more than my core is. That's what I get for doing upper body yesterday, huh? Okay, back to our crunch one more time. I'm gonna drop my weight just a little bit here. Crunch up and back. Remember, your goal, your goal with this is not to go up, but to go in towards those thighs. Exhale on your crunch up. Inhale on the way back down. Where you hold that dumbbell is going to make a big difference in difficulty as well. If you start swinging it forward, it's going to actually help you come up. Whereas if you're keeping it directly above those shoulders, it's going to make it more difficult. And anywhere over your head from there just makes it that much harder. You don't even necessarily need much weight. All right. That relax. We have one more of the back bows. So flip it back over. Crunch it up. Keep those thighs down on the ground as best you can. If you're top heavy, you're going to feel like you're just going to kind of tip forward, roll forward. Try to work against yourself as best you can. You might even need to anchor your feet a little bit to get this movement a little more uh, focused on that back. Just a few more seconds left. Relax. All right, we're switching back over. This time we're doing windshield wipers. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop my dumbbells out of the way all together for this. Um, if you have a small dumbbell, you can put it between those feet, but be very careful. You don't wanna drop it on yourself. Just kind of wedge it between the arches of your feet or the instep of that foot, I should say. That uh, windshield wiper is going to be just a rotation left to right keeping those shoulders flat against the ground. Easier version of those knees bent, just rocking left to right from here. The further you extend those legs, the harder it's gonna get. And then from there, it's just adding extra weight to get to that maximum difficulty. Like I said though, the main thing is getting as much rotation as you can without lifting those shoulders up off the ground. All right, doing an alternating back bow cross. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna try with this weight. My back is already starting to get fatigued feeling, so I might not need it for all the sets, but we'll give it a shot. So we're gonna go up and over, like there's an imaginary wall in front of us that we're trying to get our face and this weight up and over. So we get a little bit of our obliques in there helping out with this movement along with that back. Let that relax. <clears throat> Back to those windshield wipers. Again, if you want to, you can grab a dumbbell, pinch it between the instep of your foot, and do your movement from there. So twist, try to let that shoulder lift up. And same thing to the other side. Woo! I'm just having trouble controlling that weight.
So again, if you're feeling like your form is suffering, like mine is, <laughs> the shoulders are coming up, just drop that weight off. Just do a traditional without weight or drop to a, a lighter weight if you have one handy. I unfortunately don't. And let that relax. We're gonna go back to that alternating crossover back bow. I'm just gonna show you this with just body weight this time. So laying flat down, hands by your sides. You're gonna crunch up to the side like you're trying to lift over top of that imaginary wall. those lungs open. If you want to make it harder with just body weight, extend those hands further away from you. Again though, overall range of motion is most important. So go to the point where you can get the most range of motion, but it's still very difficult for you to do that movement. As soon as your overall range of motion starts to suffer, you need to drop that weight. All right, back to our last round of windshield wipers. All thing back and forth. Again, bend those knees if you want the easier version. Full extension is the hardest for body weight. And then just add weight from there on. Because, depending on how long your legs are, the uh, weight at the end of your legs is going to be vastly different as far as difficulty goes, or could be vastly different. Might only be a little bit harder, might be a lot harder. So if you need to bend those knees a little bit with weight, do so. But if you have to bring them all the way tucked in, then you might as well go for just body weight. All right, let that relax. Got one more of those back bow crossovers. Start to one side, up and over. Try to get again as much range of motion as you can. Extend those arms out for the harder version. Add extra weight if you want it harder from there. Let it relax. All right. That was our last uh, set for that group of exercises. Grab a drink of water, take a little bit of a break. We'll be right back to set in, start into our second group. We'll see you in just a second. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get ready for our second group. We're going to be starting off with a side crunch. So grab the weight you're going to be using there. Let's start off with 10 pound weight starting on our left side. Whoop, let me switch around. We're running out of time here. Dumbbell up by your chest. You're just going to be crunching up towards those hips. So crunch those shoulders off the ground as much as you can. There's not going to be a whole lot of range of motion here. So just squeeze it up as tight as you can. If you want more range of motion for this oblique routine or this oblique exercise, you can do a side hip raise. I know a lot of you don't really like those exercises, but they are a fantastic one for a larger range of motion through that oblique. This one is a little bit more comfortable for most people, but it has a much, much smaller range of motion. So choose whichever one you would prefer. But today we're just going to be doing a side crunch. All right. 
That was our on our left side here. Next is going to be a right side crunch. So we're gonna do a diagonal crunch. Weight in your right hand. We're gonna crunch up and across like you're trying to get that dumbbell to the outside of your body on that opposite side. So crunch up and across. Keep those abdominal muscles pulled in nice and tight. You're not just crunching, letting your abdominal muscles extend forward. You're actually constantly pulling those muscles in as well. So this is a crunch and a rotation simultaneously. So focus on that form. So think of that crunch we did begin with. So shoulder to thigh, but added with a rotation. And let that one relax. We're gonna switch back over to that side crunch. Get that dumbbell up on that shoulder. Kind of grab it, hold it however is comfortable. And crunch up. You're trying to go perfectly diagonally, or sorry, uh, laterally, so your shoulders aren't rotating front to back. They're perpendicular to the ground the entire time. Try to let your arm relax as much as possible, the one that hold, that's holding that dumbbell. It's just about crunching that shoulder up towards that hip. And if you want to, you can always change the grip as well. Whatever's more comfortable, you can start with it just fully above that shoulder if that feels more comfortable to you. Or you can leave it just resting on that shoulder. And let that relax. All right, back to our diagonal crunch, keeping it in the same hand. So arm directly above that shoulder. Try to let it lean out above you or down towards those thighs, crunching up and across. Again, pulling those abdominal muscles in towards your spine, not letting them contract up and out. Keep those lungs open, no holding up breath. If you want to get your breathing specifically into it, it's going to be exhale as you crunch up, inhale as you drop back down. But mainly, as long as you're holding your lungs open, you're not holding that breath. That's all you really need. All right, one more of each of these here. Starting off with that side crunch again. Again, you can either do it above that shoulder or just laying on that shoulder, whichever is more comfortable. Weight distribution would be pretty much identical. It's just what's comfortable. The main thing you want to focus on is having those knees pulled in so you're not using those legs as counterweight. And you're crunching that shoulder in towards that hip as tightly as you can. Remember, shoulders perpendicular to the ground, crunching just directly up laterally into that shoulder or that hip, shoulder to hip. Let that relax. Back to that diagonal crunch. Hand hovering just above that shoulder. If you're feeling that shoulder start to get tired on you, it means you're letting that dumbbell drift over top of your body. So try to concentrate on keeping it out over that shoulder a little bit more. You're trying to lead with your shoulder, not with your hand.
Okay, let it relax. All right, we're doing the same exact thing, this time on the opposite side. So on your right side this time, dumbbell up on top of that left shoulder. Be doing, starting off with that uh, lateral crunch or that side crunch. Bring that shoulder up and back down. Again, you can pick which way you want to hold that weight, whatever is most comfortable for you, whether it's a full extension of that arm above that shoulder or just letting it rest in the shoulder like I'm doing now. Focus on that form. Get that shoulder up as high as you possibly can. Trying to get it up, up off the ground. Again, there's not got a whole lot of range of motion here. You're just doing the best you can. Let that relax. Back onto your back. Weight in your left hand this time. If you're going to be doing that diagonal crunch, this time off to the left. Weight directly above that shoulder. Crunch that shoulder across towards the thigh, the opposite leg. Or opposite side of your body, that is. So left shoulder to right thigh. Again, try to avoid letting that dumbbell drift forward over top of your waist. You're trying to crunch forward, leading with that shoulder, not the hand. It's real easy to try to cheat on this one and throw that weight forward to cheat, but you want to keep it just right up over top. All right, back to that side crunch. Let's try this one with a full extension this time. So hand directly above shoulder and crunch straight up laterally. Like I said before, if you want to, you can swap this exercise out for a side hip raise where you're basically in a side plank, just dropping that hip down and lifting it up. Gives you a lot more range of motion, but does put a lot more strain on that shoulder for the one on the bottom that you're using to support yourself with. In that case, your weight is going to be on your hip rather than above your shoulder. All right, switch. Back to that diagonal crunch. Whew, all right. Hand directly above that shoulder one more time. Pull that belly button in, crunch up and across. Exhale on the way up, inhale on the way down. Just focus on that form. All right, one more of each. Again, starting with that side crunch. Start it up, just crunching that shoulder up towards that hip as tightly as you possibly can, dropping it back down nice and slow. Goal is to try to get that shoulder up off the ground as much as possible. It's not really going to want to move, just don't quite have the leverage for it in this position. But do the best you can. Those lungs open, exhale on the way up, inhale on the way back down. And that 
relax. All right, in case, unless I miscounted, this is our last exercise. So grab that weight right above that shoulder. Don't leave anything else. Just focus on that form as tight of a squeeze as you can, pulling that belly button in, pulling that shoulder across and up. Try to get as much range of motion out of it as you can. Focus on that form, keep that elbow, or sorry, that hand directly above that elbow, which is directly above that shoulder. Try not to swing that weight forward. Try not to drop quickly. It's a slow contraction up, slow drop back down. All right, my timer is telling me I counted right. <laughs> that was our last exercise. So grab a drink of water real quick. We'll be right back to start into our cool down. We'll see you in just a second. All right, everyone, all we have left is our cool down and stretch. So let's go ahead and get started. We're doing each one of these 30 seconds a piece. Lay flat on your back. We're starting off with a torso stretch. So left leg comes over top of the right. Just rotate those hips across as far as you can go without letting that left shoulder come up off the ground. So we're trying to get as much rotation through your torso as possible. So we don't want to lift that shoulder because as soon as that shoulder comes up, you're Starting to cheat, you're not getting any extra range of motion. So it's just as far as you can bring those hips across without lifting that shoulder. And we're going to be doing the same thing on the other side. So switch. Right leg comes across this time. Keep your right shoulder down. So let it stretch as far as is comfortable. Remember, all these stretches should be slightly uncomfortable but not painful you're looking for that discomfort of the stretch not any kind of burning pain you're going way too far if you're starting to feel a burning pain all right let that relax we are doing let me see if i can read my uh side hip dip next yeah so on this one we're basically going to start just right here let your waist drop down you should feel a stretch through that uh oblique if you're not feeling the stretch from here and go up to a full extension and drop it out from there. Keep your shoulder pressed down away from you and then just let that waist kind of press out to the side, keeping your hips and your shoulders perpendicular to the ground. And do the same thing on the opposite side. Switch over. Start here. If you're feeling that stretch well from here, you're fine. If you need more, press that shoulder down away from you. Let that waist drop out from here should feel that stretch from base of rib cage to the crest of your hip. Just breathe normally, let it relax. Do the cobra next. So we're gonna flip over onto your stomach. Press into those hands, arch that back up as high as is comfortable. If you can get to a point where you can lock those elbows out, go for it. Otherwise, it's just keeping those elbows slightly soft, extended as, as far as you can comfortably on that back, keeping those shoulders down away from those ears. You don't want to let those shoulders hunch up. And we're doing a child's pose next. So make sure you sit back in those heels, hands out away from you. We're going to split this 15-50 with a a shell stretch. So child's pose first. Stretch those hands away from you, let that back relax, then bring those hands in right next to those knees. Round that back up. Just hold it right here, trying to tuck your shoulders back into your hips as best you can. And let that relax. We're going to do a kneeling shoulder tuck next. So up on those knees, 
tuck that shoulder underneath, so left shoulder comes down underneath. Again, a bit of a torso rotation in this. If you want to, just can, you can actually let your weight completely push into that shoulder. Just as long as you're trying to get that rotation as much as possible. I'm going to do the same thing over to the other side. So which, which arm is tucked underneath? So right arm this time, rotating through that torso. All right, doing a cat cow neck. So up all the way onto those hands and knees. Drop that waist down, let it relax, and bring it back up. Just looking for the movement here. We're not gonna try to over exaggerate on the bottom or the top. We're just looking for the movement to kind of let everything relax out a little bit. Gonna help flush that blood out. And let that relax. We're going to a full body stretch next. So lay flat on your back, hands over top of your head. Press those hands and feet in opposite directions. Take a big deep breath in, arch that back up. Exhale, let all of it relax. All right, we can do that one more time. Big deep breath in, press those hands and feet in opposite directions. Arch that back. Let's go ahead and do one more. I know we're out of time. Let's, uh, these, are, <laughs> these always feel really good to me. I don't know about you. So press those hands and feet in opposite directions. Squeeze them out. Inhale deep. Arch that back up. And let all of that relax. All right. Nicely done, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this routine. I hope your core is feeling nice and tired like mine is. If not, just focus on cleaning up that form or using extra weight next time you come through this just to give yourself a little bit more of a challenge. Remember, all of these routines are designed off of how hard you push yourself. You can always change modifications of either how much weight you're lifting or how clean that form is, how slow or how fast you're moving to change these routines to fit what you need. So by all means, modify, modify, modify to make sure that you are getting the maximum amount of effort you are looking for. With that said, Thanks for working out with us. This workout is complete. See you all next time. Bye.